everyone, welcome back to Fish and Hex. Today I'm going to show you how I installed the JBO to Apex adapters and then we're going to get into the programming and how to set up basic wave profiles and how to incorporate them into the uh, Neptune Fusion. So, first of all, this is the this is the box, okay? Now you have uh, Varios P port 1 and Varios P port 2. Now you, you obviously can go to two different JBO uh, pumps at this point. So I have this is the right hand side and then this is the left hand side of the tank of the uh, WP40s. You have the one, you probably can't see it here, but you have the one power adapter from pick whatever controller you want to pick. That goes into here. And then you have the um, internet cable, the uh, ethernet, sorry, ethernet cable here. That ends up plugging in to the uh, burial speed port here, one. So you have two of them. This allows you to control two pumps, and then this allows you to control two other ones. So we're going to do a second one down the road for the two JBO PPAs that I installed on the back glass. We'll do that here in a few weeks, but that's about it. So let's move into the programming. But first, let me show you the actual pumps itself. So this is the left-hand side one. I actually just ordered the power head itself. I didn't even order the adapter. And here's the second one. This is the one I had in there for a while. It's been over a year. As you can tell, there's core line on it and all that. But the uh, they work well together. All right, let's move into program. All right, guys, everything is plugged in and ready to go. Let's get started. So what we want to do first is we want to log into the old console for Neptune. And this is the only way we're going to be able to make profiles and virtual outlets to assist us in programming the waves later. So if you don't know how to access this uh, console, what you're going to need is you're going to need your Apex IP address along with its port number. So you're going to put that into the uh, www area there and then you're gonna when you hit enter it's gonna come up with a, a username or password so you're gonna put in the username of admin and the default password is one two three four that will bring you into here you can change your password if you decide to and uh, but this is where you need to be if you want to start making these um, weight profiles so let's get into uh, making a profile in general so you're gonna go to configurations and you're gonna go to profile setup now I made a couple waves already because I've been experimenting and seeing what works best for my tank so what we have right here is my first wave that I made is uh, wave one, okay, which makes sense. And as you can see, I have a few here. I have wave two, surge one, surge two, dawn, dusk one, night one. Those are what I've been using. And we'll get into why I use them like that. All right, so um, you're gonna wanna set the control type to pump, okay? And you can hit enabled if you want. If you wanna know what enabled means, it is, when enabled, a port using this profile will synchronize its initial off time with the previous pump profile, i.e., if enabled on profile 2, it will sync with profile 1. Synchronize is useful for creating large waves through constructive interference with pumps on either side of the tank. All right. I use the synchronize for all um, of my standard waves, so ones that are running throughout the day. So essentially, wave 1 is and night are pretty much the only ones that I use um, synchronized on. But uh, yeah, so we'll just leave it at that. Now the divide by 10, okay, let's get into that. Divide by 10 will basically take the time that you pick. So say if you put an, an initial on time for 56 seconds, if you do, if you enable the divide by 10, it will actually turn into 5.6 seconds. This is useful if you wanna make waves that are sub one second intervals. Um, I don't use it, okay? All right, so I want my wave to turn on There's with no delay. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it at zero. I want it to be on for one second, then off for one second with a minimum intensity of zero and a maximum intensity of 100. Now, let me explain this here for you. The minimum intensity, whatever that number is, is how low the pump will go, okay? So if you have it at 30, which I recommend don't go below 30, it kind of messes with pumps, so they say in the manual. But um, if you leave it at, say, 30, Okay, let's move this to 30. The pump will never actually turn off completely. It will just lower its power down to 30% and then ramp back up to 100% um, which is the on time. So the way to look at this is the off time, so the time that it's off will be at this speed. The time that it's on will be at this speed. That's essentially the best way to look at it. Okay, so then you're gonna hit update, the wave will save, okay. Now let's move into um, my dust dawn. So dust dawn is when the 
lights are when well, just the blue lights are on. So it'll be from 9 a or 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Basically just the blues, and at night it's um, 8 p.m. to 9 p.m. So just when the blues are on. Now at this point, I have the same exact wave. Okay, um, I'm gonna leave it enabled here. I have the exact same wave. Okay, pattern one one second on, one second off, zero intensity, but uh, or minimum intensity, and then zero, and then 50 maximum intensity. So it's the same wave, just half the amount of, um, I guess, uh, power, which basically kind of calms the corals down and all that good stuff right before the lights go off. But you could do whatever you want. You can make it whatever you feel like making it. You can make it at 30, 50, 60, whatever. Or you can have it so it doesn't turn off completely. You can have it, uh, you know, at 30% to 70%. Whatever works for you, you just experiment. All right, so my night wave, basically from 10 p.m. to um, 10 a.m. is my night wave, which is, uh, it's not synchronized. It's 10 seconds on, 10 seconds off, 30 seconds in ten, uh, maximum, and 30 seconds minimum. So essentially it just stays on forever and um, is 30% uh, the whole time. So it's just a constant 30% flow through the whole night. Pretty easy to go, okay? So let's move on to um, virtual outlets, which actually, no, we'll wait to virtual outlets. We'll come back to that right after. I'm going to show you how I configured this into Neptune Apex, and then we'll come back to the virtual outlets so it makes sense for everybody because um, I don't want to jump too far ahead. All right, so these, these are the uh, variable speed ports. What's going to happen is when you add that um, initial um, adapter, like when you add the Apex to uh, um, Jbo adapter to your Apex. It's actually going to come up with new tiles up here. Okay, so you're going to get like a new symbol here, and then you can go in and add them. So um, I added those two down here. I separated both tanks. So this is the regular tank, and this is the Zeobit tank. So um, these are the two that I have. So I I just renamed them. You know, MP40 or WP40 left and WP40 right. Very simple to understand. Okay, so now we're into the first pump, which is the WP40 left. So you're going to want to go to advanced, okay, advanced control. Now you want to set the wave to your initial wave that you want running consistently, which would be the wave one. That's what, for me, which is the wave that runs throughout the day. So I have set a wave one, okay. Now um, in the morning, as we stated before, we're going to have a, du a dusk dawn wave, which is that one that's 50%. I want that to run um, in the morning before the lights, before the big wave starts kicking in. So if time 10 a.m. to 10.59, okay, so that's when the white blue lights are kicking on at 10 a.m., uh, then dusk, dawn, one. So that's that wave profile that's going to work at dusk, dusk, excuse me, dusk, dawn, one is what's going to run at that time. Okay, so once it's 11 a.m. to basically uh, 20.59, which is essentially 9 p.m., um, then, it's, then it's wave one, so that wave that we have our main wave throughout the day is what's going to run. Now you can have so many different waves. There's up to 30, I believe. And you can do this, you know, if you want to do different times during the day. But instead of doing that, I did the uh, the timer outlet, which we'll get into after, which basically makes up for all those random waves. Okay. So that's going to run to 9, 9 p.m. And at which time the dust dawn will come back on as the tank settles down for the night. Now once it's 10 p.m., the night will kick in the night wave, and that will run all the way to, again, 9.59 a.m., which then the uh, the dust on will kick back on. So that's a general uh, you know, overlay of a very basic setup for waves. Um, so now let's get into the outlets, the virtual outlets, and programming that, and then setting it up here in the uh, Apex Fusion. All right, guys, let's get into it. So now we're going to make virtual outlets. I'm not going to get too complicated on what virtual outlets actually are, but um, basically I'm using this outlet that doesn't really exist on a power bar to trigger a, an, an event within the pumps. So we're going to program this outlet um, as a timer. Um, so every so amount of, like for example, for this one, every 120, 120 minutes, it's going to trigger itself to come on in turn will trigger something within the uh, trigger the wave to do like a surge wave or something like that so i know that kind of doesn't make sense right now but once you see it you'll understand what i'm talking about so to make a uh, virtual you have to add a virtual outlet. so go here to configuration uh, go down to module setup 
and then scroll down to add module. So you can select whatever you want. Since I'm only using essentially two timers, there's no reason to add eight outlets, so I just add the four outlets. You're gonna hit add, okay? So when that happens, um, you're gonna have the new tiles come up into the, uh, over here, okay? Which I already grabbed them. All right, let me double click that off. So if we scroll down, I added them here. So I actually took them all out and then I re not renamed them timer one, timer two, timer three, and timer four. Okay. Now let me explain to you how these work. So you want to pick you want to pick a, a name that works so you can put it in the program code. Okay. So basically, I have the fallback to on. You're doing advanced settings. All right. So basically, what this means here is the pump is going to turn on for. I mean, basically, it's going to be 120 minutes before the pump turns on for 10 minutes. And then once that 10 minutes is done, it's going to turn back off. Okay? So that's what that means. Now, you could change the interval to whatever you want. Basically, the way I have it is once um, the time for the pump, you know, once that 120 minutes is up, um, it's going to turn off for 10 minutes. It's going to do surge waves in the, in the uh, tank for 10 minutes, and then it's going to turn back off, which then starts the 120-minute cycle again. Okay, so now one key thing you want to do is you don't want surge waves going on, you know, in the middle of the night. So it's important that you put in if time 2200 for me, which is 10 p.m. to 1130. So I wait a half an hour in the day cycle before they kick back on. So at 1130 a.m. every morning, the pump, the surge wave timer will start. Okay, so but during the time of 10 to 1130 in the morning, it will not Sorry, 10 p.m. to 11.30 in the morning, there will be no surge waves. So it's important that you put that in there. And also, you can put your feed mode in there as well. So, uh, you know, you don't have a surge wave going while you're trying to feed. All right, so that's just basic stuff there. So, and, of course, I named it Timer 1. So let's get into why I use this, okay? So let's go back into our programming here. We'll go back to the, uh, to the um, um, Jable here. So basically we have our standard programming here, our standard waves that we're using throughout the day. And then I hit if outlet timer one, so that's what the name of the outlet is, timer one is on. So when the 120 minutes comes up, it will then trigger to be on, okay? And then surge one will be activated. All right, so you wanna go into what surge one is. Let's get to surge one here. I'll show you what that is. Okay, surge one is an initial off time of zero. It's not synced, it's not divided by 10. It's an on time of 30 seconds, an off time of 30 seconds, and the intensity, maximum intensity is zero, I mean is 100 with a minimum intensity of zero. So basically when it comes on, it's gonna be on for 30 seconds at full power, okay? Now what's important to understand is that I made two of these, and I'm gonna explain why I made two of them. So for surge two, again, nothing's enabled, divided by 10 is not enabled. I have the initial off time for 30 seconds. So what that means is when surge one is running on one power head, surge two is also on, but it's not on. Basically, it's delaying its time for 30 seconds. So left side will be running full blast for 30 seconds, 100, 100 miles an hour. And then when the 30 seconds comes up, the left will turn on, and then this one will start its cycle. 30 seconds on at 100%. So it's like a back and forth, 100% to mix the detritus around the tank. It's very useful. Um, so that's, that's for the left side. And I'll show you the difference of the right side programming here. So everything is the exact same, but you just have set to, um, I'm using a different way. I'm using wave two, which is the same thing. It's just got to, um, I was doing some experimenting, but I did have we wave one in there. So we'll, we can just change this back to wave one. It's not a big deal. Um, so wave one, and then I have um, the outlet timer on, then surge two. So remember the surge two I was telling you about where it, um, just now where it basically does the back and forth motion. All right, and then of course, the only way that the pumps will be completely off is if you use a feed timer. That's when the pumps will be completely off and not being affected by any uh, profiles. I'm gonna put that back on wave one and we're good to go. Now, I hope that that made some sense. I hope that it um, clarified a couple things, but that is a very basic setup. Um, I'm going to go ahead and bring you guys back to my wave setup um, so you can screenshot or stop it, pause the video here, and see uh, what I'm currently using. Um, and if you have any questions whatsoever, just ask. Um, 
still a little iffy. I've only been messing with the Varial Speed Force for probably a couple weeks now, so um, I'm just sharing the research that I've learned and um, how it's working. And uh, it works great in the tank right now with the two pumps going and the different speeds. I don't even have to think about it. It just does what it needs to do. And when I feed, everything gets turned off correctly. Uh, there's no issues. There's no messing with the controllers. So it's definitely a great investment if you want to do it. Um, but uh, I hope the programming helped. Uh, again, if you guys have any questions, just ask, okay? Uh, I have no problem answering them. And uh, if you like the video, go ahead and like it, uh, comment, subscribe for more videos. I'm trying to get stuff out. I'm trying to get out every other day. I got a lot of topics to cover, uh, a lot of stuff. Um, we got filter socks we're going to be cleaning. We got to make, um, we got to make filter socks from homemade here. I'm going to show you guys how real men sew. That should be interesting. Um, and then we got uh, testing, we got testing chemicals, I mean water parameters. We got um, calibrating, calibration probes. We got a bunch of stuff, a lot of stuff coming. So uh, stay tuned, and I hope you guys enjoy the video, and uh, just let me know if you want to see anything in particular. I'll definitely make the video, too, because that kind of makes it easier to, uh, to get content out if you guys want to see something. So, all right, guys, till next time, peace.